Thank you all for coming. Uh, we really appreciate your support of the Business Resource Center here at the Simsbury Public Library. If you have not come to our programs before, I'll just let you know that we have a whole suite of um, schedule of talks like the one you're here tonight for, as well as classes and workshops, a variety of software skills, social media, that kind of thing. Um, I also meet with people one-on-one -on -one to talk about business research or um, how to help you find the information you need, connect you with people. Um, and we also have a really great relationship with the Small Business Administration through their SCORE volunteers as well as SBDC. Uh, our speaker tonight is actually a volunteer with SCORE, so she does counseling as well as giving these great talks. Um, and we have, a, we have a really great relationship with them and we can hook you up with the mentoring and advice that you need as you uh, grow your small businesses. Um, there is a schedule in the back of the room if you want to see what else is coming up um, this month. And then there's also, um, I post events as soon as I have them scheduled, I post them to our online calendar. So that's always the quickest way of finding out what's going on or what's coming up. Um, so if you want to contact me, I also have business cards in the back. I'd be happy to talk to you about all of our services. Or if you'd like to drop by at the center upstairs, I'd love to show you all around. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, we do have restrooms right out this door to the right, so if you feel the need, feel free to stand up and um, head that way. Uh, I do have evaluation forms in the back of the room, which are a huge, huge help for me in providing the talks, the information, the topics that you most want to hear. Um, so please let me know how everything's going. Um, as you may have noticed when I started and then stopped, we are being filmed tonight by SCTV. We have a great partnership with our local uh, TV station who uh, puts these uh, business programs up on the internet on their website afterwards. So um, if you don't want to be on camera, please just sit towards the back of the room, but you, you should be fine. Um, this would be a great time also to mute your cell phones. I just turned mine off, so. Um, that's enough about me. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, Pamela Chandra. She's going to be talking to us about big data for small business and providing um, her business. Uh, she's founder of Hedgehog Insights, and she's going to be providing insights to us tonight on how to use uh, data tools to gather uh, information and figure out how to solve problems with that information. So I'm a huge data geek. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank Take you it away. so much. Thank you so much, Jenna. Um, yes, first of all, it's a pleasure being over here and uh, meeting such a great crowd, uh, especially the weather conditions are really so bad and in spite of that you are here, so thank you so much. A little about myself, uh, my name is Pamela and I am a professional data analyst and business research uh, uh, business researcher. Uh, I spend most of the time looking into data and uh, trying to find out insights, opportunities, con consumer um, uh, insights, and how how they behave, consumer behavior, and for businesses basically. So I look into a lot of business data. Um, today I am here to present. Uh, big data for small business. Now, uh, it is quite of an oxymoron if you talk big data and small business together. But um, as we proceed through the presentation, uh, we are going to understand why it is big data and what it has for small business. So, all of you over here, I think, uh, are related to some form of business or the other, or have some business interest. So based on that, uh, you might have some expectation out of this, um, uh, this presentation. But certain areas, I would not like you to expect anything. And that would. Yeah, so that would basically be, I'm sorry about it, uh, myth breaking. So yes, I am not a math teacher and this is not going to be anywhere related to maths because uh, at the heart of it we all know analytics is about maths, but uh, we are going to find another way around to understand analytics and how it can help us in our business. Myth number two is obviously, uh, this is not going to be the ultimate analytics session over here. And you are going to go home with more questions than you expect. Uh, 
uh, but that is fine because that's all that's how we all start so it's it's a good thing to have more questions and trying to analyze how we find a way out myth number 3 is this is not going to be a usual presentation it is going to be more of a discovery process more of a way to find out what we uh, the, the the questions are the uh, find solutions to the various problems that we face in business and how data can help us so Let's start because it's a discovery process. Let's start with a question. And uh, I would like you to answer with a show of hand. So for example, you have to um, revise your marketing budget in the next year. Do you have any idea how it is going to be modified, raised, decreased, and by how much? Show of hand, yes? You know? You don't know? How many of you don't know? Great. So you put in a lot of hours in your labor and uh, like toiling for your business. And do you at all have any idea how much, how, how well it is spent, how much of sales it is basically generating? A yes? A no? Great. <coughs> Next, so you have a social media plan and Maybe not, but you are up on social media and the business there, uh, you, you, you really go on and regularly post and we are, you are active over there. So how, much, how many of you really know that it is in the right direction, it is creating the right buzz and um, the kind of the brand that you want for your business, those messages are providing you. How many of you know? Yes. No. Okay, so uh, on an average, I see a lot of I don't knows, and uh, it is not really very good to uh, have I don't knows in these critical areas of business, precisely because I would answer uh, with a cliche of Peter Drucker, and he said that if you cannot really measure anything, you can't manage it. I modify it a little bit and I say, if you don't measure it, you don't manage it. Now, the reason why you don't measure it is basically twofold. Uh, one is inherent about the type of business that we do, that is small business. And another is uh, how we have been um, operating as business owners, as sole proprietors. So, is analytics rocket science? No. But uh, yes, problems are there, issues are there, and the inherent issues in analytics is basically that analytics really can't happen if data is incomplete. And that is one primary reason why we don't really look into the data at this phase of your business, when you are just start up or you are few years young, uh, what happens is either you don't know what to track or you forget, you, you start somewhere and then you abandon or you, uh, you, you, you simply do not track it. So that is basically an inflow of incomplete data which is interrupted at various points and that does not make analytics work. The next is our data is messy. Why? Because we use a lot of tools. We try various options. At this stage, we are, we are evolving at a high rate. And every time we try out a new thing, we, we basically uh, have a different type of a data. So different tool, different data. And that becomes an unintegrated, means disintegrated form of data which we cannot work with. So for analytics, you need to have integrated clean data to start on any kind of an analysis. Third, data is decaying, of course. Why? Because again, we are using various tools and each time we use a new tool, we are basically making the other part obsolete. And every time my data gets obsolete, I cannot use it. It, is, it becomes unusable data. T 
typically the second set of issues are how we operate. So we as sole proprietors, we are really bogged down with a lot of information. We have to track our social media, we have to track our ROI, we don't make enough time to, uh, to, to focus on something. But say I, I give you one situation and I tell you that leave everything aside and for me track only sales per month and the number of customers that make that happen, would you be able to do that? How many of you say yes? Very good. So basically what we are getting at is, we are trying, we, if, if we have a direction, then we know where to start from. And if somebody tells us that this is the way we are going to track it, we know how to do it. So it basically comes down to is that one direction that we need. And the direction would come from your business. So whenever you are trying to start, you start with the first question that, what is the one thing that stops me from my growth? That one particular constraint which is a roadblock to my business. And if you know that, you find a metric that measures how much you are making progress in that constraint or how much you are ruling it out of your business, right? So, our researchers show that popularly five different constraints small businesses typically face and I have tried to list them down. So one after the other is going to come up and you are most welcome to uh, respond if that's one of yours or that's one that you also face in your business. So first one is building a brand image online. How many of you really think that it is a possible constraint to your business and growth? Next is remarketing or benchmarking with uh, the competition. Whether at all you know that the competition, what, what the competition is doing, or are you in a position to overcome the constraints of your competition? Yes, actually. Oh, sorry about that. I'll just take a minute, thank Just you. pause one second. I didn't realize this was going off the page on her. Yeah. So uh, basically, the first constraint was um, having a proper brand image on online. So basically, trying out all the social media platforms and trying out how it works for us. The second is benchmarking with competition. So what that means is um, whether we are at par with the competition, we are lagging somewhere behind, how much, and which areas. Constraint number three, is there an increasing cost? Most importantly, is your marketing cost spiraling high? What does that mean? So all your cost in inventory, uh, advertising, uh, maintaining a sales re uh, the sales representatives, right? Uh, all those costs together, are they spiraling up high? Fourth is, do you have a prior knowledge of changing trends? And how does that impact you? The products and the services that you offer, is there a changing trend in the market and are you still stuck up with the old trends? Are you aware of what's, what's new and what's going to sell in the market in the recent future? And constraint number five is, is your effectiveness of workers, like how much is the effectiveness of workers invested by you and your staff? So how much of sales it is generating and how much of uh, importance it is creating and value it is creating to your business. And as we said, when we have the constraints one by one, we should also have some a metric 
to measure it. And the metric I give you are these. So for each one of these constraints, you have a parallel metric. The first one is called virality, which is, called, which is about the viral impact of all your social media posts and all the activity that you do on social media. The next is the benchmarking, and I'm going to talk elaborately about these. We are also going to understand how we are going to measure it. Uh, this is just an introduction, basically. Benchmarking metrics is basically trying to understand the competition, what's going on over there, and where am I at, whether at par with them or whether I'm lagging behind. Customer uh, acquiring cost, cost of acquiring customers. This is basically trying to understand all my marketing costs and how much of like how, how many customers are, is it generating. Next is the revenue percentage, which means the portion of the revenue that is contributed by each and every product or service that you are offering. Next is the operating productivity, which says how much of, uh, how, how, how productive are your operations, or the hours you invest in operations. In other words, if I convert the constraints to outcome, this is what it should look like. Creating a, band Im a, a brand image online is a business outcome, right? I have just rephrased my, con my constraints so that they look like business outcomes. And for each one of these outcomes, I have a measuring yard. And these measuring yards are nothing but my matrices. The way they move, they are going to gauge how am I performing in my business or in the first and primary constraint that is stopping my growth. You could stop me at any point for any question. Free to do that. So the next few slides is going to describe um, the various matrices and how important they are in our business. First is basically virality. What it ta talks about is uh, the level of reach, the level of influence, and the type of sentiment that your posts uh, and your updates which are posted on social media from your business. So. We are basically trying to understand how much are people talking about, how, how much are they sharing, and what is the influence, and whether the sentiment, the aggregate sentiment created, whether it is good, bad, or somewhere in between neutral. Benchmarking metrics. This is again an online uh, collective information that is, uh, that is being tracked based on traffic. So. It basically says that how are your sales channels, sales channels which you use are performing in comparison to what the competition is doing. Geographic locations, which geographic locations are you excelling in comparison to what the competition is doing or the immediate industry. Cost of acquiring customers or CAC, it is basically clubbing entire marketing cost and dividing it by the total number of customers that you have in a month. So any time period you take, a week or a month, and track it. So basically, it, is, it measures the cost of landing a customer. If, if, if you spend $100 in marketing, and if 10 customers is, is what you've got that month, then your CAC is basically 10. Revenue percentage, it talks about what is the contribution of each of your products and services? So it basically talks about opportunity and risks. Which, which areas are going, or which products and services are going high, and which are not, not that well performing, and what you want to do about it. The next is the operating productivity, which, as I told, is the revenue in a month and the number of hours you invested into the hourly rate. So the, the denominator, the, the bottom part, 
that gives you the entire cost you have the entire budget you have spent in labor you and your staff and when we divide our revenue per month on it what we basically get get is the revenue generated by our uh, labor what it tells is how are how how are those hours spent in sales pitches how effective are they the research and the marketing so to understand these matrices we need a tool it is not going to be done manually as i said we are not studying ma mathematics over here we are basically going to go by the tool and the tool is going to do each one of these for us all the calculations all that we have to do is to understand what the tool is doing as per our research and as per what i have seen with my customers businesses at this level uh small and medium scale businesses it is generally okay and good enough to have a tool that measures your online platform and a tool that measures your physical business so google analytics is uh, i'm going to talk about it in in length it 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 basically gives you a tracking of your en entire online presence and along with it if you maintain an internal database that should be enough so the tools over here and uh, we we are going to get into each one of these tools and understand how the metrics me, the metrics that we just now described how are they being tracked and um, how we can see that it is uh, doing good for our business so i'll get into google, google analytics just give me one second So I think you all have uh, have your websites linked to Google Analytics. Yes, am I guessing right? Okay. So uh, as I as I said Google Analytics is pretty much the answer for online uh, business tracking right now. A little a few words about uh, Google Analytics before we get into the specific <coughs> metrics. it is an online tool and it is extremely robust and it is uh, complicated too but the good part of about it is, is it is really inexpensive and the type of information it tracks even some of the uh, some of the very good tools out there they they too fail so it is really robust and i i always recommend starting off tracking your online presence with google analytics because another point about this is the information available to understand the reports on google analytics is huge and they have very well drafted manuals and uh, like i could have gone through it but maybe this is uh, today is not the right session to go about it so the metrics that we want to track with google analytics first is benchmarking metrics so it is present in the first tab called audience i'm sorry i cannot see it and straight away go to benchmarking metrics and when i click on channel sorry i can't 
clicked on the wrong information. The report that you see over here is basically trying to gauge the various channels, sales channels, or channels through which you have your traffic, and how it is performing with respect to the competition or the immediate industry. Now, as such, it might look a little complicated, but just follow the red and the green arrows and you would try to understand and, and you would understand, you would have a picture about which one, which areas are performing well and which areas are not. So for example, for my business, I see my direct social, all of those session, the first metric that is session is not performing that well. But when I come to new session in acquisition, I see some improvement over there. The good part about this analysis is, so I'm basically talking about this bit. Now if you understand this bit is basically representing the figure or the traffic for my competition. And if you go down, you are going to have an understanding of which areas my immediate industry is actually putting in a lot of money and getting a lot of traffic. So for example, I see other advertising has six, 669 traffic, this area, wherein I have invested zero in that. I have not advertised. But most of the people in among my competitors, it's spending a lot on advertising and that's where they are getting the traffic. Similarly, if you go to other areas, data that is even remotely correct. Just as Google says that, how does Google know my competitors are using all those locations? Okay, I can't so imagine how they'll be able to do that. So um, when I have signed up for Google Analytics, I have given the details of my type of business. And Google your competitors put in different details and usually so there's not necessarily they may not be late. Yes, of course. So that is there is a chance of uh, error over there. That th that is actually a valid point. There is a chance of error over there. But most of the times it has been seen that this is reliable. And why it is so? Because the searches and Google is basically an immense search engine and all the searches and all the traffic and all the remarketing, redirecting that happens in the internet, a lot portion of it is tracked and that information is with Google. So Google can give that information to us. While your point is correct and there is a percentage of error, and that is basically an inherent quality about all web analytics data, that a lot of it goes in error not a lot, some uh, five to 10 percent of it. But when you understand the major chunk and how it moves, you get a very good perspective, an idea about the uh, wh whatever you're tracking. So for example, here I'm tracking sales channels because most of the data is, uh, is valid. I get an understanding. I cannot make a 100% surest decision on it, but I get a solid direction. Is Google getting those from keywords by competitors, or where are they getting that data from? Uh, to some extent, keywords. To some extent, my competitors are also on Google Analytics. I would also note that Google's new search engine optimizer is designed to eliminate those keywords that goes on. So people aren't going to show up. Absolutely. That's so that. Ten years ago, you could have had somebody who just said keyword, 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 keyword a million times in their in their copy, and they would wind up erroneously being claimed to be a competitor. But now the new um, hunger, is that what this? Yes. Yes. Um, a lot of sort of 
kind of creates a, a way to, to bring up legitimate competitors. Absolutely, and I totally agree with you. That is the latest program, the crawling program that Google has released, and they have publicly announced that stuffing, uh, stuffing your in your websites or your content with keywords and repetitively doing it, something that does not make sense, that is not going to be searched. So to some extent, Google is also trying to bring some sanity in it and has brought in it. So that is the level of understanding and that is the level of reliability we have. And uh, that's where all the, all uh, all the importance about Google Analytics comes, and Google Analytics is the topmost web analytics tool right now in the market, basically, although it's free, it is actually. So, here we got getting back to it, we have benchmarking, and then the most interesting part is the location, which tells me areas, geographic locations, wherein these were uh, well in my immediate industry gets a lot of traffic in comparison to where I got and each one of these can be expanded actually no. so do you know how many competitors we have in that base? The exact number I do not have, but I know where where are my competitors getting the maximum traffic from. If it is in United States, which part of United States, I would be able to know that. And not only traffic, the quality of traffic. So when I move across, I see the behavior wherein the engagement level also shows how good is the traffic? How engaged are they? How much exploring are they? How, how, how well are they engaged with the type of products and services me and my business and my competitors are, uh, are providing? So that's where it becomes important and I get a very good idea and I get an information or direction in moving. The other piece that I wanted to show in Google Analytics and some reason I do not have it here but I'd like to add another account and I'd like to show you this One second. <coughs> um, sorry about that. Yeah, I think I have some bit of information. So, this is basically uh, the thing that I was trying to show you is. The demographic uh, distribution, the type of interest, and information about people 
about demographics is being provided at Google Analytics. And it is an extremely important information when you understand the details about the type of traffic or the details about traffic that comes to your website. Why is it important? One, you know the type of messages, the type of posts that your immediate uh, target customer is going to like. You know how you are going to brand and how you are going to sell. At least you have direction, yes. No accurate ans answers. It is a free tool and it is giving a whole lot of information. But you get a solid direction. From, from the division and from the distribution of gender ratio or interest category or uh, the type of in-market, like later you will see, I'll just drag it down to interest, affinity. So this too gives me great information about what are the areas that people take interest in so that you can modify and customize every information or type of com communication you put out there on social media or on your website or on the content that you publish. And when we talked about virality and creating a brand image, this is where you're going to get a good heads up, uh, a thumbs, a, a, a pointer, like set of pointers where to start from, right? And I'm going to describe virality a little bit. So having done this bit with Google Analytics, obviously there is a whole lot more about this tool that we can get into, but uh, maybe not today. So the next bit is trying to understand virality. And I'll get into another online tool, which is called Social Mention. So this is also an open source tool. And what it does is it's going to take in your website address or special keywords that you use for your business. And then it is going to give, for example, one of the famous keywords that I use for my business. And I'm asking it to search in all. So when it searches, it is basically going to give the same type of information that we track in virality. I'm sorry you cannot see this bit, and most of this information is over here. Ac actually, actually, most of this information is on this panel. And this is giving us all the areas that Hedgehog has been mentioned and how popular is this keyword. Not a very significant information for me right now, but if I suppose the other day I got into Now, this business is really doing well on Twitter, and that's what I found the other day. And so I'm going to try and understand what is the uh, engagement level of this keyword. So at the rate, Reality Crowd TV is uh, the, the keyword that is being used in Twitter. So Twitter, as we, as we know, is a microblogging uh, platform. So I'm going to click on microblogs. And it is going to give me all the mentions. But the most important information over here is going to give me the sentiment. The sentiment is nothing but it shows what is the level of positive uh, sentiment is, is around this. Oh, sorry. Is it still hedgehog? Sorry. Here it's trying to tell me that it, there is a whole lot of positive sentiment around this keyword. Because 14 is to 1, it basically shows 
14 is the is the level of positive sentiment and one is the level of negative sentiment 106 percent of reach it is really reached well and these are all the mentions that they have on twitter and if you get into this tool later when you go back and you can check it for yourself it gives a very good snapshot of what exactly are my messages doing over there online yes please is there some setup that needs to be done for this or nothing this? nothing it's an open source tool just like google analytics and that's what like my motive over here was to start up with very simple and easy to use mostly free or inexpensive tools so this is one of them which i follow And all of these information are in that handout, one page handout, and you can, uh, the session notes. So for now, we are going to get out of this. And the next tool that is going to do the rest of the job for us, all the other metrics like the CAC, the operating productivity, and the revenue percentage, that is basically being done by a dashboard it is an Excel based, based dashboard and it is something that we have created in our business and I'm going to take you through that right now. Okay. Again, the same problem, and I'm really sorry about it. So when you will open it in your home, and when you will open it in your computers, you are basically going to see the first page, which comes as a dashboard. And it is four, and it is like, it gives four charts. Now, by the look of it, it looks a little scary and complicated, but it is not. It is an extremely simple tool and created in Excel and it is modifiable because the data part of it is totally made to uh, have you enter your data, enter your business data and see the results on this page. Now I'm going to go through, briefly go through each one of these charts. Yes, Would please. I didn't so get that. There I didn't get that. <coughs> No, uh, it has been created by my business. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it is going to be available to you. Yeah. Um, so I'll just briefly take you through it, and the manual for it is going to come along with this tool. If you'd like to use it for your business, it's going to come with this tool. So, very briefly, uh, the first uh, that is chart A, it gives me the cost of acquiring, the marketing cost for acquiring one customer and how much of sales is that particular customer is generating for me. I have paired it up with sales. Uh, th that's not one of the metrics that we discussed. We discussed CAC, but I paired it up with sales as well so that you get a comparison that how much of cost and how much of sales, right? So. Uh, again, this the the uh, the plotting over here and the graphs over here are based on an hypothetical business, and the data has been entered by me. I'm going to describe the charts, and when you use it for your business, it's going to look uh, uh, it's going to represent uh, your business information. The second chart is basically um, great. It is giving me the operating productivity. What is it? The number of uh, the revenue generated per month based on uh, the number of hours spent, right? So uh, e each one of these, if for, for every month, it is giving me the number of uh, the, the revenue based on every hour that has been spent in labor by me and my staff. The next chart, chart number C, uh, chart uh, C, is basically giving me the revenue percentage. 
So in our business, we have, as I told you, in our businesses, we have various types of services, various types of products. Uh, and I'll give you a little example of what I mean by this. Is like just the other day I met a photographer, and ideally her uh, her her job, her bread earner is uh, clicking photographs. But when I interacted with her, I got to understand she not only provide uh, goes into photographic trips, but she also provides services like uh, providing customers customized photo uh, photographs providing uh, uh, framed and like uh, albums, customized albums, and those are additional services. So every profession would have actually, uh, uh, every business generally has a range of products and services. And that is the reason we are trying to understand what percent of my entire revenue is service A giving, product A giving, and when I pair it up with the cost I have incurred for that particular product, I'm basically telling what is my cost and what is my sales. Does that make sense? Right. Next, the, the last and the fourth chart is basically giving me an account of the various areas of marketing expenditure. And it is, it is basically showing the pattern and the movement uh, this is, uh, you, you can understand it on a <coughs> monthly basis how are my costs are moving. The other interesting thing about this dashboard is the filters that you can have for it. So this data and this information is for two years. Okay, you cannot see that. Okay. I'll bring it up here. These are called <coughs> filters. So I'll just show one. For example, I want to understand my information for year 2012. I just clicked 2012, and you saw how every graph modified itself to give you the picture that you had in 2012. So if I say it is 2013, just for 2013, the picture is in a snapshot. For the month Jan, Feb, or I should. So if I, for the first half of the year, in year 2013, that was the picture. So it is really flexible, and you can play around with it to understand how it fits and what type of information it can provide to your business. So how, how this relates to your business, how you can use it for your business, it comes to this. And this is the backbone of the dashboard. Yes, please. In your consulting practice, how common it is for your clients to actually keep this level of detail in their database, in their QuickBooks, and then be able to or are they going back in and recreating it for the purpose of this? This is basically like the detailing comes from uh, keeping a general record. Now, uh, it is like you would let me know if I am able to answer your question. Yes, QuickBooks is a source of information. But since I have given a template over here, and I am asking you to keep a record of the units sold and the sales, this acts as a tool wherein you can feed your information right here. You may or may not use another tool. QuickBooks is one of the tools which can provide you some information on these. But you can directly feed in information here. So this table works as a tool, basically. Did I answer your question, ma'am? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. So, suppose over here I want to add, I'm sorry, I'm just adding another 2013. <clears throat> 
suppose sales I had 200 and then hours spent so this is basically giving me the hours I invested and it is the sum total of hours so suppose I spent 10 hours the cost of hourly rate I, I keep it as 10 online advertising cost various Google AdWord costs it costed me suppose 20 and say I feed in another 5 over here and the networking cost is really high this time for me emailing cost is something around 15 now these, this is just a template and I can modify each and everything about it and I'm going to show you how say the new customers that I generated this time is 3 and the total number of customers that I had is 7 second please bear with me this generally does not happen It's basically a wrong formula that got in over here. <coughs> Just delete this row. So basically, if I just enter So what I'm trying to show over here, and uh, I'm not sure why it's not giving, is basically if you just add one row over here, it gives you, you just have to go over here and do a data and a refresh. And it is, and it refreshes all the charts that are present over here automatically. So this tool is built so that you can add columns and you can add rows and if you are able to refresh it just by clicking data and refresh all the data and all the information gets refreshed uh, i'm going to send you manual like i'm going to keep it with jenna the manual and all the information related to this but uh, that's how uh, this tool work it is like going back to our ppt Yeah, it is not really a very robust tool, but what it is, is it is a starting point and it helps you uh, track the various information so that you can uh, get started with it. And I'd get to the last bit of my presentation and that is uh, trying to summarize. So. Uh, gut feeling can work for small businesses of course but uh, without metrics your business almost becomes a series of guesses really so it is better to go about the analytics way and understand how it's uh, going to uh, impact our business it is best to start with the first constraint that that faces our business right so uh, and then after you decide on the constraint, you should decide on the right measuring yard, which is the right metrics. And tracking 
and measuring the metric should be started with some simple and easy to use uh, tool before you move on to something very complicated. That's is precisely what I had. And you, the floor is now open for questions, and I'm ready to answer. Yes. So Google Analytics is free? Yes, it is. And there is a premium version as well, but uh, it gives um, a, a very, very um, upscale uh, type of a service, which is not required because we don't use that much of data and that much of information. Um, and it is really for big businesses, large businesses. So for small and medium scale businesses, uh, the free version is absolutely good enough. As part of your uh, business, do you conduct uh, training sessions on Google Analytics? Yes, absolutely. I do that. For yes. groups or individual or both? For groups, basically. Yeah. So do I want to do a group session? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What data should small businesses really focus on? Because there's so much data. And absolutely. you have to figure out, you know, really what, what funnel should we looking at um, the traffic, how many hits, you know, unless it's a conversion, unless somebody's emailing or calling, they don't become customers. Absolutely. So Absolutely. explain sort of, you know, I guess, the small business, what kind of data we should be looking at? So, um, like from your question, I understood that you are basically looking into the online half of your business, mm -hmm. right? And if it's an online half and you are on Google Analytics, I would say, the clicks and the visits as such are not useful. They are pretty much junk. Why? Because they do not relate to goals. So the first step to use Google Analytics is set up your goals. And this, there is an elaborate information about setting up goals. It's, it, does, it does not come very easily to people like us and who start off Google Analytics for the first time, but that is the information. So what I mean by goals is, suppose you have a document that is left down, downloadable on your website, right? And you feel that if a person clicks onto that docu uh, document and downloads it, it is sharing some very important information about your product and services with that, uh, with that visitor. So that is letting that customer or that visitor one step ahead in the buying process, educating him through that download. So that download becomes a type of a goal and all the clicks and the visits and the sessions and bounces if that is linked to that particular goal, it means something. There are more, uh, suppose I say there, uh, there are these many number of sessions, suppose 50 sessions for goal one and uh, 20 sessions for goal two. So I can understand there might be uh, something about goal one, which is pulling in more, more traffic or there might be something wrong about goal two, and you can look into it. So it, might, it must always be, for Google Analytics, it must always be linked or tied to your business outcomes. As I have already showed here as well, all the constraints are basically my business outcomes, and all metrics must be tied to them. Unless, unless and until that is done, it really does not make much sense. So if you're talking about a few um, just a few uh, metrics or just a few information in Google Analytics, I would say start with the, um, the demographic overview, the benchmark tool, and there is a couple of more which is very important. One is the in-page analytics, wherein you just click onto that button and you get a snapshot of v your website and each area of your website and the percentage of clicks that part is getting. And it gives pictorially. Yeah, so. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's called in-page analytics and it is there on Google Analytics. Yeah, um, I think I'll be able to show you. 
quickly. I have a, I'm in the mortgage business, and they really don't advertise anymore. We don't do that. We have a website, a lot of networking. Okay. A lot of strategic partner trying to get people like financial advisors, right? And CPAs, and right. Like that. Right. It's very hard to measure these. Uh, you don't see it. You know, most of the activity is not on the web. Is your website at oh, par yeah. with? Is well, your? I got people talking to them, emailing. Okay. Creating partnerships. Actually, uh, there, there could be a lot of reasons and a series of reasons, and it is, again, uh, subjected to analysis, uh, analysis of your data. And uh, uh, why isn't people, why isn't a lot of traffic in your website? And again, comparing with your competition, you would get to understand which channels your competition is basically yeah. taking. And, uh, well, I'll do that because we have a brand new website. We've got a lot of money on it. Right, right. Yeah, those are areas which like is subjected to a series of information and together they are going to give you, uh, and if it is a very new website, I think you should give it some time. Yeah, because in Google Analytics, uh, to have the data, uh, you, you, after you have logged on, you should wait for at least one or two months. Yes. I'm still a little struggling. Um, I pay so many Googles every month for my business. And they, they go through all the Google algorithms, they change it, and they get all that data. But they can't tell me, and, and you seem to be able to do it. I don't know what, how do you know what my competition is doing? I, I struggle every month to see if there's a whole bunch of customers they're seeing that I'm not seeing, and I don't, that I'm missing that I need to go after. And I don't see how you have that little percentage of what you get versus what your competitors get. How do you even know that's even a true number? I mean, and the people I pay to do this can't tell me that either. And that, that's the part I struggle with. Much. I see all the data, I go look at it, but it doesn't mean, I have basically six major competitors in the United States, and I don't, I don't know if three of them are finding another little place where they put all this stuff that I'm totally missing. And to, to, uh, to answer your question and to have a really solid competitor, uh, competitor analysis, like these analysis are sold as syndicate reports. And they are done based on actual survey of your competition. So if that's what you consider as Maybe authentic. Could give some of that data? If someone called me, I wouldn't do Oh, yes, of course. It is done without the mentioning of the name. Syndicate reports are based on that concept wherein they survey competition, they survey your industry, and they'll give a, a perfect snapshot without any percentage of error, and those are costly reports uh, uh, that you get for your industry, and you can choose for the geographic location. So it could be Connecticut and within Connecticut specific areas they could be so detailed. And uh, for, for them, you have to hire third party uh, syndicates and uh, like third party market research and uh, reporting firms. And yes, this is not Google Analytics. If that is the level of accuracy you are looking for, Google Analytics is obviously not the answer, to, to, be, to be very honest. It is going to be the syndicated reports. Yes, sir. Isn't there a level of data you can learn about your competitor's website performance just by plugging in their own website? Oh yes, there is, um, there is one uh, tool called Competitor, I guess, Compete, Compete.com. And uh, that tool is also trying to gauge and it does anonymously, but it gives quite accurate data because it uh, uh, takes a registration fee, uh, and that's what it does. You you provide your industry and all details about your industry, and believe me, your in, your information is also out there for for your competitors. So yes, that is information sharing. But yes, everybody is gaining some bit out of it. So without inform without properly mentioning the name, they would give you information about your competitor. And the website, uh, the tool is called Compete.com. They would give you a 30-day free trial, so you can try for the first 30 days and check how it goes. Yes. 
Any other question? Thank you very much. And I appreciate you guys all coming tonight, and I appreciate family you taking your time. Thank you so much. It's tonight. an opportunity for me to. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.